to Catherine's Garden and Home. It's so good to be with you here this evening. And I am back in Catherine's Garden. I am not in an undisclosed location like last week, um, but I am back in Boston, in the Boston area. And right now I am in Zone 6. That's Zone 6 in the New England area, Boston, the city of Boston. And my garden is an urban cottage style garden. I grow um, flowers, vegetables, and all different types of plants. I grow uh, flowers, um, and I have special types of flowers that I like. Um, and I pretty much like all types of flowers. <laughs> Hello to those who are watching. So good to have you with me. Come on in the chat and let's talk. I've been trying to figure out, well, what am I going to talk about with you all? And the idea came to introduce my um, squash. That This beautiful squash is sitting um, there and needed to be picked. And I thought I had picked it. Well, I didn't think I had picked it. I wanted to pick it, put it that way and I um, somehow got caught up in harvesting other things because since I've come back from vacation or from a couple of days off uh, from the garden, actually five days, um, everything is just um, ready to be harvested, especially the tomatoes. So I was busy doing that work and I'll share some of that with you later on. Someone has come up who, hello, Yankee sister, how are you? So good to have you with me. Hello, Sonia. Yeah, it is so good to be in my garden. And thank you all for um, coming on and being with me. So I was busy trying to organize myself and get everything together so that I'll have something to show and tell. Yes, yes, so Sonia, that's right. Hello, gardening friends. It is good. To be here with you this evening and the thing is is that um, here in Boston it is in the 90s but there's a nice warm breeze uh, that's moving through yes greetings to all yes Yankee sister um, <clears throat> there is um, a nice breeze blowing through the garden and um, right now the Sun is on the other side so this is the cool side of the yard and um, I am just, I'm just, it's nice, you know? It feels like summer. It feels, um, especially with my cannas that are doing very well here, um, and my um, deck garden, it's doing very well. It feels very tropical. It feels, um, it feels really nice to be here. Oops, sorry, with the, the cannas and so forth. and. Um, they haven't flowered yet, but uh, it just, it's nice, it's nice, it's nice. And um, also, when I was traveling, you're in my neck of the woods. I'm in Connecticut Zone 6A. Yes, Yank sister, I know, I know, I saw that, that you are nearby. You're not too far away. Um, well, Connecticut compared to Sonia, who's all the way in, in Cali, California, on the West Coast. We're on the East Coast over here. Yes, we are. <laughs> I don't know. You guys bring out the joy in me. So I start to sing. So bear with me. Everyone continues to, I mean, I get, do you get weird calls? I get these strange calls from people. And I don't know who they are from all over the place. And I'm like, I'm not answering my phone. Forget that. But anyway, um, so I am back. Yeah, Sonia, what did you say? Sonia. Sonia's all the way in Cali. Yes. Oh, thank you, Yankee sister. Um, thank you for that compliment. I truly appreciate it. Um, I, I miss, sorry. I miss my garden, um, being away from it, and um, when I came back, it was it was amazing to me. When I came back from where I was, and I stepped into my garden, I was like, "Wow! In five days, 
everything grew. I could see the growth. I could see the difference. I can see the explosion of, of color and life and of fruits and harvesting. I could see it all. And I was like uh, so amazed. I mean, because you know, you're in it. So because I'm in the garden and here every day, I really don't see the growth. But when you go away and you come back, you see your, um, you can see your garden evolving and you can see the changes. And of course, I saw also all of the work that needed to be done to, to tidy it up, you know. And, um, but overall, it was an awesome, amazing, spectacular um, time just walking into my garden and, and seeing all of the, the lusciousness, the color, the abundance, the beauty. It was like, wow, God is awesome. And he allows us to experience all this joy. And I just kind of just went into a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving that I'm able to experience this here in my garden for this, this year. It just made me very, very grateful um, and thankful that I'm, I'm able to have this little plot of land where I could grow things and, and um, to see them burst into greatness. You know, it's just a wonderful feeling. It's just a wonderful feeling. Now you all have been commenting, so let me um, hear what you're saying or see. So I don't answer my phone either. I know, I know that's right. Yes. What a difference when you go away and come back. Yeah, Yankee sister, it is such a a difference. Um, and right here, just in this little garden on my deck that I have with the pots, it's amazing. Um, the canna wasn't that big and look at how the nasturtiums have just um, grown and now they're, they're about to seed or they are seeding. I mean, the seeds are going to dry up and I could actually save those seeds and plant these plants in next year uh, without having to buy seeds. I can start to save seeds. And on that note, that's something that we could talk about um, is uh, saving seeds. Now is the time to like, start to gather your seeds together when you see them or some of your plants and um, start to think about storing them. So you want to get the things that you need to uh, do so. Like I went and I got myself some um, envelopes from the Dollar Tree and um, a, a, a marker and um, you know, I have a box in which I'm going to put the seeds in so that I can have them and put it all in one place, you know, um, just organize myself, thinking in advance and organizing myself so that when the seeds, like the seeds here on the, the different plants, when the seeds start to formulate that I can um, have it all together. Yes, your plants on the balcony are looking very full and lush. Thank you, Sonia. Yes, they are. And um, they're, they're starting to really give out their fullness, what they're, they're supposed to look like. Well, also, um, I planted some burpee seeds, uh, winter squash, and um, it was just a packet. It just had a packet of different types of squash. It didn't tell me what particular well maybe it did but i didn't pay attention to it but um because i've all always planted butternut squash butternut squash and um of course pumpkin and um that's it butternut squash and pumpkin oh i did acorn i did plant before acorn squash um, because they had it at the Dollar Tree. So I said, let me try that out. So I got the acorn squash. And, um, and I've also always watched other gardeners. This is something I didn't do last year. I have already started saving for the season. Yeah, good, good. You're talking about the seeds, yeah. Um, 
that that is really good and I don't know if you were with us last time Yankee sister when we talked about zinnias and how um, we can gather our zinnia seeds and our um, marigold seeds because the marigolds plants are starting you know if you you've had them the flower is now turning to seeds um, so start gathering the, the marigold seeds the zinnia seeds the, um, the nasturtium seeds, I'll be able to gather them. Um, of course, if you have any squash or pumpkin seeds, even your tomato seeds, if you have a really ripe tomato, um, you, can, um, you can harvest those seeds as well. Um, you, what you do is you uh, release the seeds into a cup and you'll like put it in with a little water just to get the slimy stuff off of it let it sit I think um, for um, maybe overnight and then rinse off the seeds let them pat them dry and then put them in a uh, in a in a um, an envelope or someplace you know that they don't get moldy um, but that make sure that it's dried thoroughly and you'll have your seeds for next year from your tomatoes so if you taste if you're eating a very delicious tomato and it's ripe and you want more of it and you want to grow it again next year well save your seeds and you'll end up having that now I do that with um, cantaloupes even from the uh, by purchasing the cantaloupe from the um, store I would say the the seeds because there's just so many seeds and I feel like I'm wasting them so I would throw them out throw the seeds out um, now into the ground and I know that there's not enough time for the cantaloupe to grow but um, I just like the process of doing that who is this? hello Rambo how are you today yes thank you all the way from England or UK coming to join us I appreciate it yeah so um, I'm talking about I do want to talk a little bit about the different squash and that it's amazing that we can try different pumpkin and winter squash mixes and um, and I have a picture here I went to uh, Google to see if I could get some information I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this but there are different squash and different seeds that you can get so this is a different one I've never grown this before and um, I'm wondering if 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 it's a squash or if it's a um, a pumpkin I at first I thought it was a, just a different type of pumpkin but I love the skin color you know I'm into color and texture and all of that good stuff and it looks very ornamental something to add on on the Thanksgiving table um, to help decorate it you know to use it in decoration but definitely to eat it I want to eat my squash um, and then this is another one I think this is do you know what this is called what is this squash called somebody I think it's um, a mancy pants or something a mancy <laughs> uh, something I don't know but it's I got it um, my husband was so surprised. This one looks more like like the pumpkin type squash, but a fancy pumpkin. But this one, uh, spaghetti squash. Yeah, I heard of the spaghetti squash too. That's more like the long, right? Yeah, yeah. This one looks in very interesting, and um, and it's it's growing really well. I think it's. Um, I forget the name, but if you know the name of this, please put it up in the chat. And it's good to get out of, I guess today's talk is about experimenting in the garden and coming out of our comfort zone and the way that we always do things. And one good thing that we can do is look it up and, and try to find out uh, different squash find out what it is
All right, they have like Big Macs, kosher green stripe, um, kosher green stripe. I wonder if that's what this is. And they gave um, different Connecticut feel jack o' lantern. Well, you know I have the jack o' lantern. And by the way, I am going to have quite a few jack o' lantern pumpkins in the garden. And if you've been following me, you'll know that last year I planted the jack o' lantern pumpkins and I got at least three or four of them. It's very strange and amazing. Yes. And um, so now um, the pumpkins lasted. But, and one particular pumpkin last, I was just waiting too long and it started to spoil. So my, this was like early May. So my husband broke the pumpkin and threw out, tossed out the seeds. And now we have like a pumpkin patch. But what I then did was go and single out some of the starts and put them in different parts of the garden. So if you've been following me, which most of you have, you know that in the jewel garden over on that side where the sun is now that I planted those um, pumpkin seeds and I also planted these pumpkins too. I'm trying to grow Connecticut field pumpkin but all I have is vines. Well don't, don't worry because that's what it is right now. I think they're catching themselves. Um, I actually just started to really gain a uh, fruit and the thing is is that it happens so rapidly um, so don't worry my other seeds my other pumpkins on that side of the house um, the where I put it where the compost pile is um, the it has vines and it grew up and started the seedlings but right now there aren't any fruit there at all period which is amazing. On the other side, where the jewel garden is, where the roses are and all of the other things that I have there, that's where. Good evening, Miss Catherine and Gardner family. Is that a pumpkin, that funny looking one? Look at them. <laughs> I thought you might, uh, <laughs> I'm growing Crown Prince pumpkin. Wow. And look at this one. My, my husband said he saw this. And he didn't know what it was. It startled him. You know, because we have different creatures uh, in our garden. Sometimes, uh, especially on that side, I've seen skunk coming down and, you know, so forth. So I think it startled him. But no, that's what that is. And here, I this, this, th that one, yeah. I'm wondering if it's, I think I just saw the name. I was looking it up. Um trying to get some information before I um, come on with you all and of course the time was going so fast I wonder if it's kosher green stripe because that's what this but this is not green stripe this is orange stripe but anyway somebody go on to Google and ask Google I see the a picture of it here um, with the with the different seeds mix. What? What'd you say? <laughs> that white squash looks like a patty pan squash. Yes, Yankee sister. That's what it is. I knew it was patty something or pan. Yes. I believe that this is a patty pan squash. Yes. That's what this is. This kind. And, I, um, and it's growing pr quite uh, well up there at the front in the, with where the hibiscus are. Yeah, I will definitely let you know what it tastes like. And uh, this is the smallest one. There's actually one larger. It's just that I didn't pick it. But um, it's, and it, the vine is growing only in your, what? What did you say, L? <laughs> But anyway, patty pan. This is the patty pan. What did you say it was there? Patty pan squash. Yankee sister, you're right on. That's right. So, 
And you know what? I got my, I don't know if you have, if you get Victoria Magazine. Well, this, this is my last issue of it. And I got the Vic, Victoria Magazine for Autumn. And on the cover, hello, Catherine and Garden Friends. Garden Zarmi, how are you, sweetie? How you doing, Garden Zarmi? Yeah, on the cover of the magazine, I don't know if you could see, it was kind of small, but right here, is the pumpkin on the table the same little pumpkin and i said wow they're going for the fancy stuff not it's not the regular ordinary pumpkins anymore um here on their cover you could see all of the different types of pumpkin that they have there and here's the one like what i have here's a white one then of course the regular pumpkins and look at this one so I think diversity in pumpkins are in. People are not just going for the ordinary jack-o'-lantern pumpkin, that they're now um, growing all of these different types of pumpkin. So it's something for us to do to start to explore variety in our garden and in our eating. Here's another one, Here's, here it is again doing well so happy to be here with you all thank you thank you see here they're having it with some wine <laughs> so I think for the fall see right there there it is again and I said to myself I've got that pumpkin growing in my my garden And then they have this, look at how they decorate with the pumpkin. Isn't that interesting? I love Victorian styles. That is what drew me to your channel. Oh, thank you, Yankee sister. Look at that. With all of the different pumpkins and the variety here. Look at that. See my pumpkin right there? <laughs> Wow. So we, we can start to stretch ourselves, stretch, move into looking at different things because you're a better gardener this year than you were last year. You've improved, you've made steps, you I understand it more. So now is the time to start thinking, well, what am I going to do different next year? How am I going to start to stretch myself and think about getting variety in my garden and in my um, vegetable patch interesting said l anderson there's so many varieties of squash yes rambo there is there is and somebody mentioned spaghetti squash now um i i saw it but i didn't i haven't tried it so now i'm gonna have to um push myself and try different types of squash now we love we love butternut squash here at my house um, and we um, I try to plant a lot of butternut squash actually my second year my second year on this channel my first year my second year on this channel I had so many butternut squash butternut squash just grew prolifically throughout my garden and especially in different areas I just had them. Um, I had so many that I was giving them away. I mean, if you see some of my old uh, videos of it. And um, so the next year I decided that I wasn't gonna plant as many plants because I said, oh, I'll have a lot. And you know, the next year I didn't hardly have any of them, but instead I had the pumpkins. And um, so, you know, we can't be afraid to plant the seed. I, I expanded my garden this year with 1,000 pots. Oh my God. How do you water them all, Yankee sister? 
how do you what how do you water all those pots my goodness 1,000 pots yes miss Catherine that's why there are so many amazing gardens across the globe people are not afraid to grow different things I'm getting there yes yes I'm adding kobasha which is a Japanese one next year and a Jamaica a Jamaican one really 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 wow you guys are making me excited about this wow diversity in the garden hmm. and different squash oh you're making me so happy <laughs> you know i like that so you know we first start we learn about squash we learn how the vines move through we learn about gardening with the common regular every day which is good that's the great that's the best way to begin but then we need to be um, to explore just just kidding but my daughter said we were being attacked by all the pots <laughs> I can see it in my mind that's why I'm laughing <laughs> Hopefully you've left a pathway for them to walk through, right? Where is it? On your deck or in your backyard or in your porch? Where are your, po your pots of plants? But I hope you left an entryway. I am also taking out plants that not making me happy. Those that are bullying me, they are being evicted. All right, Elle. That's what I say, L. Anderson. Mm -hmm. You pull out the thugs. Anything that's not working for you, out it goes and you know at first you kind of tolerate everybody and all of, of not everyone but you know all of the different plants and types of plants but after a while your tastes change you become more sophisticated in your gardening you start to get to know what you really want yes yeah and so you you then pull out the thugs um, and that's what I do. That's actually what I was doing today in my garden, especially over by the um, herbal garden. The tomatoes were going wild all over the place and they were starting to um, get crinkly leaves and turning yellow. So I went through and edited the garden. Is that Kiki? Hi, sweetness. How are you? How are you, Kiki? Great to have you. So I went over to that part of the garden and I started editing those tomatoes and pulling things out. And I found a lot of thugs over there of weeds. I said, you are not staying here in my garden. I pulled them out. And so now it looks, it looks so nice. It, it's actually, the garden's able to breathe. And I am taking in what I really want to see. And so it, it's good. It's a good thing to edit the garden, to maintain the garden, to know that you are not um, you are not um, beholden to that plant. I mean, you like the plant, but if the plant is not giving you what it's supposed to give you, then it, out it goes. You know. But it, yes, yes. Kiki, saying hi to everybody. So Kiki, this is it. Do you know what kind of pumpkin this, or squash this is? Yeah, we are going to explore, especially next year, but it's, it's like your home as well, Zen. Yeah, that's right, L. L. that's the truth. Yeah, you have to find, um, create the peace and remove the clutter, right? Well, remove the clutter in the garden. I should have named today, removing the clutter from the garden. But anyway, we could have a, this is a subtopic of the topic of of the pumpkins so yeah this this is um, a beautiful pumpkin and I saw this pumpkin um, in in my Victoria magazine here that I got and um, so for fall people are decorating uh, well some people decorate their front walks I mean, you know, I'm not so much into all of that. I'm going to eat my pumpkin. However, it's good to have and see the different types of pumpkins. 
look at this now this is in the magazine do you see all of the different variety of pumpkins there I don't know what this is that's interesting isn't it and then of course um, now they have the white small white pumpkins I've always thought of pumpkin as being orange right but now the variety, the diversity is there for us to explore. Why stay with one boring jack-o'-lantern type pumpkin when you can have different types of pumpkins? And um, we found out, oh, beautiful gourds. I'm growing some too. You are. Look at this. This is a, a patty pan. Time to squash. Gee, Mama Grows, how are you, sweetie? Good to have you. Great that you could come and join us. So this is a patty pan, patty pan pumpkin, a squash. And this, 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 um, no, the reason why I'm getting all of this diversity is because I went to, was it Home Depot? I think it was Home Depot. And I was buying seeds and I saw this variety. Yes, mine looked like that with the green stem. Which one? This one or this one? The patty pan? Yes. I saw um, a burpee pack of seeds and it said winter squash. And it showed a different, the white one will be beautiful in a fall arrangement. Definitely. All of them. Both of them will. Um, and so I picked up the white one. Oh, okay. So I picked up the pack of seeds um, along with the butternut squash that I'm used to and the um, and the, the butternut squash. Yeah, that's what I wanted. You know the, the, the wall fan butternut squash? Yeah, that is what that is a staple in my garden. It's something that um, I've grown for the last three or four years and I end up having so many of them. They store well and in the winter time it gives you a, a nice taste of the garden, the freshness of the garden. And my husband loves to put them in stews with, uh, you know, make beef stew and add um, the the butternut squash with it or bake it in the oven or make the little um, puffs I've, I did a couple of videos on that what I do with um, butternut squash little, making the little puffs um, squash, squash puffs it's like potato puffs tastes delicious with a little salt and pepper on it um, butternut squash tastes really good in different ways you can bake it and if you bake it, 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 it will come out something like um, potato puffs, um, or you can, um, or you can boil it. You know, put it, cut it up. Some people peel off the skin, but we don't. When it's fresh like that, we don't peel off the skin because we know where it's coming from. And then, um, then afterwards, we scoop out the inside. And you can make it almost like, you know, mashed potatoes, like a, um, a dish, adding butter and stuff to it if you want to, or you can just eat it plain. There's something about fresh food that you cook yourself. It is full of flavor that you don't really need to add a lot of things to it. But if you have an herb garden, if you have some herbs, you can sprinkle some herbs on it and it will um, just enhance the flavor. And it's a great side dish to your um, your meats, your chickens, and things like chicken and stew. All right, let's see. I make butternut squash chili in the fall, winter on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. On Thanksgiving, I make uh, coconut curry butternut squash soup. Woo, girl, you're a cook. <laughs> that sounds delicious. I still, uh, a Sue sounds good. Can't wait till fall when it starts cooling off. I know, Sonia. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Yeah, so that's what the squashes are really good for. I just started some spaghetti squash. Hopefully, it makes it. Yeah. Well, what rate, what area are you in? Um, 
What zone are you in? G Mama Grows. What zone are you in? Are you in a late zone or um or are you in a when I say late zone, like a zone eight seven seven B, I guess, in eight A. I think you all have a longer growing season than I have. So you'll probably be able to do more. Rambo says, been great guys. Much love everyone. It's later here, so I have to I had to come, Miss Catherine. Much love. Oh, God bless. Thank you, Rambo. Let's all give Rambo a hand. He's been constant, like my last name, Faithful. Thank you so much. You know, and I feel so honored for you to come all the way from the UK here on my little channel here to spend some time with me and to chat. And hopefully it has relaxed you so that you'll have sweet dreams and that um, you will be able to rest. So it's so good to have you here. Yay! Rambo! Green hands. Yeah, be safe. Yeah. I appreciate you. Have a great night. Yeah, so, yeah, much love. Yay! <laughs> yes. So, all of this is good. I think that the topics that we are, so the theme that I see going on here is, one, if there's a thug in your, your, in your garden, pull it out. If there's a plant that you really don't like anymore, it's okay. You can take it out. You are not married to it, okay? You can um, have it there, and if it's not meeting the needs that you have of joy and happiness and you feel good about it but causing more work than it should, pull it out and start again. It's okay. You got permission. <laughs> so that's one of the topics that we were saying, getting rid of those thugs and maintaining the garden making the garden look like how you want it to look it's your garden so you make it look like how you want it to look if it's going to make you feel good and feel peace take um have it now for example you know i've been i've been doctoring and caring for those cabbages that i have in my um herbal tea garden area well i noticed that it's been very wet and i seem like the um cabbage was starting to get very holy. I was starting to see like slugs were coming around it. So I touched it and um, it had developed a head. So it was ready for me to pick. I picked it today and I'm going to show you in the video. I'm going to put a video together with it. Um, not me picking it, but you seeing what it looks like. And um, I um, put it up and I actually uh, removed the the leaves from it and you know what inside there was a slug inside the cabbage so I think I caught it just in time before it it's no good but I cut it up and I'm going to make coleslaw and this is the first time that I've been able to actually get a cabbage to the full process without it being devoured by slugs and, and cabbage worms and all that other stuff and so now I'm going to be able to eat my cabbage and make coleslaw I'm so excited about that and I think so I think that having the um, marigolds surrounding it helped to keep and ward off some of the bugs but I think after a while they just felt that the you know the, the, the bugs it was so moist and wet and I didn't do a good job of removing the bottom leaves so they were able to come in and bore in a little bit but as I said I caught it before it actually destroyed all of my cabbage and I'm able to have um, enough to make coleslaw I'm so excited about that and you know when I was tasting the cabbage it has a different taste than a cabbage um, in the store it's almost kind of a little pugnant you know it's it's strong it has a strong flavor uh, which was um quite amazing to me and that's true about our vegetables that we grow ourselves that that the flavor is so much more richer and intense 
All right, let me catch up with what you all are saying. Yes, yes. New things are for us in our garden and life in this season, y'all. Yes, yeah, go ahead, preach, girl. <laughs> yes, new things, new things. Yes, I love that. Yes, new things are for us. Did you hear that, people? New things are for us. Not just in our gardens, but in our lives. But if we are able to receive the new things, mm, yes, Lord, I had to really organize all my pots and everything, and it came out well. Good, 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 good. Yeah, and that's the same thing with um, whatever it is. And is whatever it is, it's also with decluttering. You know, moving the clutter out of your life. And I love cabbage. I'll try growing some. Yeah. Yeah, and um, it's, I think because of all of the rain and moisture, that, um, that caused the slugs to come out. Um, so, and I wasn't diligent enough in removing the lower leaves because they just look so pretty. I just, I hated to, um, to remove those lower leaves, but I should have, but I'm glad I caught it. And so now I'm going to be able to enjoy um, the coleslaw, the, the cabbage. Um, but we, we are at a time now in our lives where we can explore new and different things, things that will make us happy, that we can share with others. And when you are joyful and happy, when you feel peace, joy, when you are decluttered, when it, it, it shows up in everything around you. It shows up in your attitude with others. You're a little bit more patient. It shows up in your, your atmosphere. Um, it shows up in your attitude. Um, that feeling of, um, you know, freedom. Freedom. And I, I, it's, it's amazing the, the correlation. Thanks for the tip on removing the lower slug eaten leaves. Yes, you should. You should. And that will help to, because um, now they don't have, it's not so easy for them to um, bore in or come into the plant. They have to work a little harder. But I do think that the marigolds work. I think that it works a little bit, at least, to um to distract and detract, detract I think is the word, um, the slugs from attacking your cabbage because that cabbage lasted a long time in the garden before needing anything. And I want to stay as organic as possible. Um, so I think having the marigolds helps. Slugs love, love marigolds, they do. Well, they didn't love these marigolds. <laughs> They didn't seem to love my marigolds, but I, I think, I guess they are mixed um, opinions about that because I read an article in which it said to uh, protect the, um, the brassica kind of um, vegetables to plant marigolds around them. So it seemed to work. They are the only pests that will eat them. Oh, well, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's how it works. The slugs eat the marigolds and they don't have time. They're so filled with marigolds that they don't have time to eat your cabbage. That's how it works. Kiki, that's how it works. Hey, Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so they could eat the marigolds. I don't care. Just don't eat the cabbage. Let me get some. Yeah. So, um, where was I? Anyway, yeah. So, that's what we have to think about. We have to think about diversity. Yes, the marigolds are a trap crop for the slugs. Yes. Well, it works. It works. They, they are, um, they, it, it helped to protect my, um, yes, sis, yes. It helped to protect my cabbage. And then I planted so many, you know, that whole box of seeds from the Dollar Tree. And planted them out so um, they had a feast that <laughs> they didn't go after my cabbage but um yeah so that was the, that was one of the things that we talked about um, removing any thugs anything that is a thug in our garden as far as plants are concerned insects just you know really working on that 
um, and leaving room for what we really do want um, and thinking about, well, what does it mean to me? Does, is this plant causing me stress? If it's causing you stress because you're worried about it, it's not growing or something's happened to it, get, you, can, you can get rid of it. You're free to do that and get some more. Get new plants. Those Dollar Tree seeds are so good. I'm saving the marigold seeds like crazy. But I haven't started yet. But yes, that is, a, that is a wonderful thing to do, to start your seeds, because they do work. I remember, was it a couple of years back, I was saving seeds, and I saved some of the marigold seeds, and I planted them out. And they do return looking just as good, just as beautiful. I also have my nasturtium here that's growing. And this is what a nasturtium, that's what a nasturtium seed looks like. So what is going to happen is that over time, the nasturtium, um, that seed is going to turn brown and then it will be ready to harvest and uh, to put away so that I can have some more of these nasturtiums. And this nasturtium tastes really good. They're edible. Um, it, it has a kind of like peppery taste to it. I said uh, peppermint, but more peppery. Okay, Al says, wow, I have the box marigold. I haven't, what did you say? I have the box marigold I haven't used yet. I'm going to throw them tomorrow. Good, do that. Because um, Nister marigolds last long. They go right into the fall. Um, they are not, I think they can, they can handle slightly cooler temperatures. So you're not too late, and they will actually grow fast. They will germinate quickly. I love being one with the earth. This is God's blessings. Yes, Yankee sister, from Dollar Tree. Yeah, plant it, try it out. Um, and the marigolds will probably uh, last long. To me, marigold seeds last long, pretty long. Just harvested Mr. Simpsons today. Good, 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 good. Okay, will do. Yeah. And um, then afterwards, you save your seeds, and then you don't have to go to Dollar Tree for seeds. <laughs> Even though I like to still buy them anyway. Um, you will have your own seeds. But, you know, okay, so this is the thing. When you're saving seeds, you can save the seeds of the type that you really love. You know how this, um, marigolds have different types of flowers? The, some of the flowers are like single, single petaled. Then there are some that are really bushy, um, almost like cactus-like shape. Then there are some that are um, really golden in color, some that have more of a rust. So then you can save the seeds of the plant that you really like, you know, the, the type of marigold that you really like, and save that for um, next year and then you can uh, pull out a certain strand so in your garden you have just that one you know you have that kind that you like the most um, and that's how people do hybridizing and creating of new and different types of seeds what they do is they um, pull out the ones they don't like yes you can be a uh, be particular yes you can be particular and um, actually um, I think you were with me the last time Kiki when I, I talked about that book about Erin um, I forget her last name but um, she had the flower farm and how she's weeding out different types of zinnias and that there's a special type of zinnia that she is trying to um, grow floret farm I think uh, cut garden farm and so that is now a different thing that she's into. She's not just growing flowers or growing zinnias uh, just to sell the zinnias, but she's actually now um, selling seeds. She's actually becoming a hybridizer and she's um, pulling out um, those that she doesn't want, but she's just, um, keeping roguing out the ones that she doesn't want but just keeping the ones that she really wants i only saved marigold seeds last year this year i will label the colors yeah yes 
Yankee. Yes, Yankee sister. Mm -hmm. And that way you will know, you know, because if you want a different design and so forth, yeah, it is really cool. That book is so interesting. Uh, but actually, better yet, her, um, she has an Instagram page and um, Florette Farm, uh, Cut, Cut, Cut Garden Farm. Erin is her name. And um, she gives little vignettes and she talks about what, you know, the little movie clips about what's happening in her, at her farm and how she is um, coming up with a particular type of zinnia. And then she's going to sell the seeds. My marigold seeds are all mixed up, though. Didn't even think about separating. Excuse me, that's all right. It's not too late. So you can have your mixed seed pack. And then now, you can become more um, more specific, you know, about what kind of seeds you want to have, right? So it's okay. There's no problem. No, no problem. Just start a new new um, bag collection of individual types of seeds that you really want to have. But yeah, so that's what I had to share with you all today: the diversity in squash, winter squash, and pumpkins. And um, you know what? I don't even. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Um, so that is something to think about. So um, for me, right now, I'm growing jack o' lantern pumpkins and uh, butternut squash. But along with that, now I have these um, burpee seeds that have the different types of winter squash. This is uh, um, pansy panty pan squash and then this beautiful one which seems to be very very famous very well liked it's popular um, and uh, as I said when I was looking through my Victoria magazine that I just got for fall it really started um, to bring it to my attention how nice it is to have different types of pumpkin and it's great for decoration um, but then also of course you store them and you can eat them during the winter and create different dishes and stews and uh, like you said Kiki that that soup sounded really good now if you're a cook uh, this is your opportunity to take your food with saving seeds the plants are more acclimated to your climate and growing ecosystem exactly that is so true but then you can also um, you can you can design your own specialty you know your own special plantings um, I was just looking here Uh, they're talking about sweet potato, but look at this table. And, and to decorate your table for um, Thanksgiving, you can show off your different types of squash and pumpkin. Isn't that nice? And uh, they created a dip and different things. So now it is taking your food that you have harvested and now taking it to table, creating that delicious meal, cooking it, making sure that you eat what you have planted. And that is what exact that is exactly what has happened here at my house. That's nice. Yeah. That is what has happened in my house. My husband, while I was gone, he went and he cooked some chicken and stew. And when I got it was delicious. Uh, I got to get that issue. Very nice things in there. Yeah. Well, it's Victoria. Um, and it has like that English style. Um, and since I, yes, never thought of growing gourds. Yeah. Yes. Yankee sister said she never thought of growing gourds. Um, it, 
it's it's really good the gourds are good like if you want to create different things look at what this what they did here with the uh, squash with the butternut squash they used it <laughs> as a vase to put the flowers in it's <laughs> They must have had a lot of squash and excess. But anyway, um, I want to thank you all for, for coming and joining me today. And um, I hope that it was fun and interesting. And the, so the message today is don't be afraid to explore. Don't be afraid to try new things. And also, if there's something in your garden that is uh, causing you um, discomfort, it's a thug, then you can get rid of it. But the thing is this, I think that especially now with this era, this new time that we're coming into, that we need to be creative, we need to be free, we need to continue to have that mindset in which we're willing to explore life and enjoy every bit of it because tomorrow is not promised us but we can we can live the in each day in a, a sense of wonder joy and exploration through the garden because every day in my garden at least I see something new I see something different and I, it, it makes me happy so the whole point is to um, create that joy can create that space and let your garden be it where you can think where you could create where you can innovate and you can become um, even better and brighter and bigger and you know large <laughs> abundant Okay, let me see. I, you all were talking, but I wanted to just share that. Do they grow well in our zones? Um, very creative. Thank you, Miss Catherine, so much. Fun tonight, fam. Have a blessed rest of the week. Yes, yes, ma'am. Enjoy the live. Very informative. Thank you, Sonia, honey. Uh, I'm doing it for the kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. The gourds are good for the kids. Yes, so true. Thank you for all the information. Continue to have a blessed week. I really enjoyed myself as always, Miss Catherine. You are a breath of fresh air. Thank you, sweetness. You are definitely a beautiful petal of the flower. <laughs> Thank you, Yankee sister. You up here with me. And Kiki's, I think, in New York. So yeah, we're northerners. So we've got to, we understand the climate. We understand what's going on here. And Sonia's over there in the dry desert but God is good and uh, we pray for rain over there in Cali Lord send the rain to California and bless them with some good weather love this life bless blessings to you thank you sweetie yeah and so um, I will be since some have a great evening everyone high desert yeah she's in high desert <laughs> She's in the high desert. Oh. But she, she's living life and her garden is, is growing. Yes. So continue to let us grow, grow, grow together. And um, if you find out more information about the different types of squash you want to share um, next week, um, feel free to do so. Um, and then also, now that I'm back home, I will be... Um, pulling together a lot of videos and definitely Sunday my Sunday video um, everything is just blooming and definitely a time for harvest so I'll be sharing some of the harvest information with you so continue to um, so if you haven't subscribed subscribe and continue to click and like and all that good stuff so that um, and hit the notification bell. I find that that is um, very, very much a problem. If you don't hit the notification bell, then you end up missing a lot of people. I pray for, um, what did you say, my sweet? Pray for safety with all of the fires out west. Please be safe. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, there's so much going on. 
And so we definitely have to stay prayerful. Yeah, this is a time um, to connect with our, our God, our Creator. And, um, and if you need rain, ask Him for whatever you are in need of. Ask Him for it. He's, he is, this, this month is the month to ask. So whatever you are in need of, ask. Ask God. Ask Creator for whatever it is that you are in need of. If you need help with something, ask. Don't be afraid. And even to ask the people around you. Ask Google. If you don't understand something, ask. So that's another thing that I want to share too. That this is the month. This month heading into September. This is the, the month of the release of abundance and harvest. And so whatever you need to take you into the winter and you're in lack of, ask Creator, ask God, and then help, ask Him to give you the people who can give you the answers. And also ask Google. Google has a lot of resources. Oh, hi Nina, I was just about to end. How are you? Garden for Mom. How are you doing? How's mom and how's, it, how's everything going for you? I hope that all is well. So good that you came in the chat, Nina. Ask and you shall receive. That's right, Yankee sister. Ask and you shall receive. This is the time for receiving. The harvest. The harvest is here. Yeah, so ask. There's an abundance going on all around. And um, so we need to ask and uh, we will receive um, if we ask and then we have to ask in uh, with a heart of thanksgiving i know you are leaving just caught the tail end yes you did my sweet <laughs> it's so good to see you on the chat yes i know i am working on the other channels too so um so you can catch me there and i'm also going to be um I'm trying to revamp that channel, but um, right now I'm here in the gardening channel and um, still giving a word because we all need a word so that we can continue to grow and grow together as we grow in the garden as well as we are growing um, in our lives too as well. And uh, we want to be in that place of joy. So yeah, ask. That's the, that's the word for today. If you need something, Ask Creator, and He will He will give it to you. Especially if you believe, ask in faith, believing, and you will receive. Because this is the month of abundance and harvest. And if you go in this, with the cycle of what's happening, harvest and abun abundance and gathering. So this is the time uh, for things to be released. This is this is the time of plenty. So there's more than enough to go around. And if there's something that you are in need of, ask for it. Because there's going to be someone who's going to be able to meet your need. So don't be afraid to ask. All right, my lovelies. I am... Um... Hi, gardening friends. Yes, say hello to Nina, everyone. Glory. <laughs> you felt the glory? Yay, Yankee sister. Yay! Hallelujah! I'll feel the glory with you. Yes, I receive. I receive all of the blessings. Everything from the garden all the way through to good health and prosperity. And um, I wish and pray for the same for you all as well. Good health and prosperity. Mm -hmm. And many blessings. And whatever that you're in need of, that your needs are met, because you're going to ask Creator and He's going to release it and give it to you. Amen. So I'm going to end on that note. And remember that we're going to grow, 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 grow together in Catherine's garden and home. Come on and grow, 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 grow together in Catherine's garden and home. Yes. So have a wonderful, blessed rest of the week. Look out for the videos. Uh, check out each other's videos and have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Thank you so much for coming on. And uh, remember, uh, check out these different types of um, 
pumpkins. Remember to save your seeds and pull out the thugs. Any thugs, pull them out. Have a nice evening. So goodbye to you all. Bye, Sonia and um, Kiki and um, Yankee sister and um, Garden, Gardens Army, L. Anderson. Have a good evening. I'm trying to see who else came on. Oh, it's so nice here right now. There's a breeze in my garden. There was someone else. Oh, yes. Gee, Mama Gross, thank you for visiting. Great to have you. Rambo went to, went to bed. <laughs> Who else? Well, I hope I didn't, if I didn't call out your name, um, know that um, I still appreciate you coming and I thank you so much for being a part of this. And uh, see you next time right here in Catherine's Garden and Home as we grow, grow, grow together. Have a wonderful evening. Love you all. Bye. <laughs>